How you guys doing? This is Neil, the art instructor at MasterPaintingNow.com, where I have over 300 free tutorials for you to check out and, and art lessons. From photo manipulation, to using Photoshop, to digital painting, and also drawing. Right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the question was about lighting source, so this will be about form and lighting in this lesson, or in this uh, little uh, I guess an answer to questions, but uh, hopefully you'll learn something from it. So one thing you want to do is look for the shadow. If you're going to analyze a photo, then I really recommend taking your own photos and analyzing them. But if you have to analyze photos that you can find, uh, then try to make sure you like maybe know who took the photos. So you can ask them, hey, what kind of light setup did you use? That's why it's better just to take your own photos if you want to analyze them. But nonetheless, look for photos with shadows. The shadows here are going to help you know the direction of the light, right? Now that doesn't that doesn't let you know how high above the person the light is, really, unless you can see the whole entire shadow. If you can see the whole shadow, it'll at least give you an idea of how of how high above the person it is. That is, how much is it uh, above the person's head? If it's directly above the person's head, the shadow will be, you know, around the bottom of the character, just be right right here. As the as it begins to drift to the left or right, um, then we'll see the shadow will start to get longer. And we know that the more the light is down close by the character, like down by his midsection, the longer his shadow is going to be. Just like when the sun is at a sun, sunset or sunrise, your shadow is very long. Whereas it's in midday when the sun is directly above you, your shadows are very short. Um, but anyway, the first clue then to, to find where the light might be is the shadow. So we know the light is coming from this way over here somewhere, right? So the light is coming like that and hitting him. Right, so we know the light's coming like this. That's the... well. And so what I mean by opposite of the light is more like this, actually. Now, what I mean by the light is opposite of the shadow, for those that might misunderstand that in my uh, form and dynamic lighting and perspective course, is if the shadow is being cast that way, then the light must be coming from the opposite way, but following that same parallel line. That is, the light will be hitting this side of the body, and the shadow will be cast in the opposite direction of the way the light's hitting. So now we know the direction of the light. The, the light's coming from this direction here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that on a separate layer. And make sure I get this, oops, get this line right, about like that. Okay, so that's the direction of the light. The next thing we have to try to figure out with keys, uh, key hints in the photo is, is the light above the character or is it kind of equal to the character or is it kind of below the character? Well, we know the light's not below the character because little cast shadows are being casted in this direction. There actually is a little cast shadow here too. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I had to change the photo into a piece of art. And uh, anyway, so you can see cast shadow here. It's all being cast. There's under shadow here. Um, that's, that's turning away from the light. There's not very many cast shadows on the photo. Most of it's form shadow. The part that are more turned away from the light are going to be darker. So if the light's coming from this way and the cast shadow is coming this way from the from the chin, and there's no cast shadow here uh, from his chin, then we know the light is kind of coming from, it's kind of toward us a little bit. Because if the light were more, let's say, on the right side, then we know the cast shadow of his chin would kind of come down more like that. So we know it's on the left-hand side, so it's over here somewhere. And we, can, we know that it has to be a little, at least a little bit above the waist of the character because it's causing a cast shadow here of the, onto the neck from the head. We also can tell by the shape of the light in this area where the hot spot is that the light isn't completely above his head. Because if the light were taller than he was, we'd have a light, a, a highlight here too, hitting the top plane of his head. But it's not really hitting the top plane of his head, it's actually hitting right here. This means the light is about almost the same height as he is, and it's only partly hitting the top of his head. In fact, the light's probably a little bit shorter like that. So it's only partly hitting the top, and then that's the hot spot, and it comes, it comes down like this it's getting less and less intense down here as it is up here. And in fact, the light source might be a little bit lower than that. It might be right about here. And it's, as it's coming down like this. We also know the light source is probably pretty close to the character. Um, and we, one, one other thing we know is that the, there must be more than one light source. The reason why is you see there's one shadow here and there's one shadow here, right? So you have the main shadow, the darker one, and you have a lighter shadow right there. This is the lighter shadow right here. So because there's two shadows, there must be two light sources because it's two shadows being caused by the same object, that is the lake. Whenever there's two shadows caused by the same object, there must be more than one light source to cause that. Because if you have one light source and there's two different objects causing the shadow, the shadows merge together and form one 
one clear shadow. That is, they'll look like one, one form. They won't have different colors. But when you have overlapping shadows like this, even if it's from different objects, if they're different uh, hues or different uh, values, then you know there's more than one light source. But you definitely know there's one more than light source when they're both, both shadows are being caused by the same object. Right, so the other light source could be a bounce light. Um, they're both kind of coming from the same direction, uh, pretty close to the same direction. Uh, so it might, you know, we know he's in a light room, so there's a lot of bounce light in this room. That bounce light is hitting and, and making the shadows not so dark. If you were in a dark black room and you had this one light source hitting him, then all this shadow here would be super dark. Um, you wouldn't really see any sort of definition in it at all. But we're getting some definition in the shadow area, some details, because there, there's bounce light and possibly another light source, be it a reflective surface close to him. A lot of photographers will use like these, I don't, I'm not sure what they're called because I um, never got that much into photography. It just took enough to understand lighting in it. But the, I used to know what they're called. They're like the reflective big square things and they reflect light <laughs> anyway uh, probably just called a reflector anyway they might have another name for them um, there might be one of those on on the right hand side somewhere just softening up the shadows a little bit anyway so that's the analyzation of this photo and the reason why the drop shadow of the neck looks the way it does which is right here is you have a form here this muscle is like a mountain it comes up and like this right or more like a, think of it more like a skate ramp or something. Anyway, it has form to it like this. It's not flat. And because it has form to it, the shadow has to follow that form. Now, if this head were just floating and it was like an egg, and then there was, you know, or if it was even sitting on, 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 on the ground here, and this was ground below it, then the shadow would be casted, you know, something like that. And it depends on how, you know, uh, high the object is to be casted like this. Now, the reason why the shadow of the head is smaller than what you would anticipate is the head is looking big and everything gets smaller as it goes down in perspective because we're looking, it's coming up at the camera like this, right? Due to perspective, everything is getting smaller as it goes down. So the head isn't really this big in proportion to the body. It just looks big because it's the closest thing to the camera. So that means that you have a cylinder here and the shadow is being cast on that cylinder and then it's being cast on this shape here. And when it gets cast on this shape, it follows the form of the shape. The same thing as if you have a sphere and another sphere and it's casting a cast shadow, the cast shadow is going to follow the form of that sphere. It's not going to be straight, right? And so that's what's happening here. The cast shadow is being distorted by the shape. And the cast shadow appears smaller than the head because of perspective, because it's going down like this and everything is getting smaller very quickly. From the head, everything starts getting smaller, 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 very, very quickly. And so the cast shadow appears to be a lot smaller than the head. That might have been one of the things that were throwing you off. Uh, the little shadow here, so you got to think about how the light's being casted. As it's coming down and hitting, this is, a, this is a ridge here, right? So if I were to draw that large, you think about it as it's like this ridge, and now it has form to it, right? It's kind of like a cylinder. So if the light is hitting this part of the cylinder, that's the, the main part that the light's hitting. That's the bright part. So that would be the where the light's hitting, let's say. Then you know that down here is going to be shadow. You'll have a little bit of cast shadow right along that edge there like that. And then you're going to have some cast shadow over here. And now it depends on you know what the shape is that it, this is connecting to on how much shadow there would be. Now if it's just on a piece of flat thing, you'd have a bunch of cast shadow like that. But it's not. It's, it's connected to like another type of cylinder. But there's muscle there that comes up. And then the other muscle comes up. And there's a little notch there. And that little notch is what receives the cache on its Y. And that, that takes learning more advanced anatomy, which is to stay tuned for my advanced anatomy course, the uh, Anatomy for Figure Artists course I've been working on and um, working hard on it to try to get it finished. Right, now the other thing you want to keep in mind, if this part is the highlight where it's white, the opposite side of that, of that thing. So let's say you have a cylinder and this side is the... Okay, let me go ahead and uh, put some tone down here really quick. Right, so let's say uh, this side here is a side receiving light, then the opposite side of that cylinder, right, the opposite side, the other side of the cylinder, is the side that's the darkest. This is the side that's the brightest, this is the side that's darkest. So the opposite side of this here would be on the other side where we can't see it, back back behind there, right? That's the darkest part. So as it wraps around, you know, that is, in other words, this edge here isn't the darkest part. You want to put a big old dark line and shade like that. Let me go ahead and redo this for a little bit bigger so I can make this point. This point's very important. Um, I, I expressed this point pretty clearly in the course, but I'll just go ahead and do it for this video really quick. 
So if you have this shape here, and you light the lights here, here's the where the light's hitting. What you don't do is do a hard shadow here and work your way up, and do really super dark here and work your way to the light, uh, because that's not the opposite side. The opposite side of this is way back here, and so that wraps itself around. And by the time you get here, you have more of a grayish color, and then it kind of fades over. And here you have more of a grayish color, and it kind of fades over because it's not the opposite side of the of the cylinder, right? The light's in here, shadows here, so it'd be really dark, and then it, it fades itself around like that. Well, we're not seeing this part. We're seeing like right here. So this edge is more like right here. And so it's more gray rather than black. There might be a little bit of cast shadow down here, which would be a little bit darker. And then you have that little niche there that was that was being caused right there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Of course, these legs here are being turned away from the light because see the direction the light's coming. And this, this leg is turning down away from the light. So that's why you have all this highlight here. Um, all this right here is in shadow, and then this is all turning away from the light, so it's all in shadow as well. Same thing with the arm, it has form to it, and so you see this part is, is facing the light, it's coming, you know, the light's kind of coming, it's coming at this direction, and it's kind of coming down. So you got to think about it, it's up here, and so it's coming down, it's hitting, and we know the direction it's hitting, and you got to think about both of those things simultaneously, and that's how you know it hits there. This bicep is turning mostly because see the arm is like this. This arm is coming back forward toward more toward the light. But this arm here is kind of turning more back away from the light, right? As the light's coming. That's why the light is only able to hit part of it. So when you when you draw and you think about um when you think about the uh the light source and the figure that you're drawing, you want to think about the the think about looking at the figure from the light's point of view as of your camera. What can you see of the figure? Well, if you were to go into a 3D program, and, and like in Dad's Studio, for example, you can actually choose to make your light source the camera. So you can reset up this light, this, this figure, make a figure in a similar pose to this, set the light source up in a similar in a similar pose or similar area, and then go to the camera and view the figure. And you'll be able to see the part that you're able to see of the arm would be like here. That's the main part of the arm you're able to see. So that's the part that gets lit up. And you want to kind of do that in your mind, and that can be kind of difficult sometimes, but uh, hopefully that helps you understand how to analyze photos a little bit better. Now, when it comes to the chest, you want to think about first, what if the chest were a flat plane, like this, and then this part's turning away. So because this part's turning away, it's mostly in shadow, like that. But this here would all be pretty much lit up, and the brightest part would be here, and it'd be it'd be treated like a uh, like that, and it get darker like that. So it basically would be treated like a flat plane and therefore like a gradient. So it would be bright here, and it would fade off in those two directions like that as a gradient. However, the, the chest isn't flat like that, is it? The chest has actually two different things. It has one piece here, and you can imagine it kind of going away, so all that goes in the shadow, and it has this other piece here. Well, this isn't flat either. It has curvature to it, you know? It comes like that. And you want to think about that curvature, right? You want to think about the form it has. And I, and I go through how to, you know, do all this in my figure course, how to understand form in that way. That everything has like a three-dimensional mesh. So you want to imagine the three-dimensional mesh coming. And so now we know the light source is hitting here mostly, right? That's the brightest part the light's hitting. So we know the light is, is you know, because it's coming at that angle and it's a little bit above the character. So it's hitting... What happens is this comes up and around like this. So the this is the hot spot because that's the part closest to the light, right? The part that's facing closest to the light is here because it comes up and around like this. This part is turning away from the light. However, this chest muscle here, it's coming up and like this. And that curve happens to be facing the light because the way the light is. We know the light is kind of toward us, the viewer, a little bit. So because the light's toward us, the viewer, a little bit, this is being hit first right? But it's kind of, this is kind of turning away from the light. So how to imagine that then, uh, over here if we kind of draw it big, is imagine you have one mountain here, right? This kind of like a, or an egg, let's say, right? And it has, has form like this. Well, if the brightest part, if the brightest part of this egg is here, then it's turning away from us here, right? So we can see where this object is turning away from the light. Because it's turning away from the light then, this 
is all going to be darker and work its way like that. And this is going to be really, really you know, dark and it's going to work its way this way. And the light's going to kind of go like that, and fade out, and fade out. So it's turning away from us. However, if we have another egg right next to it, like this, let's say, where is the light going to hit that egg? Well, it's not going to be quite the same as this egg because we see the light's coming. At, we're, the light is toward us, the viewer. Bam, it's hitting here. So where does it hit over here? It hits right along here. And so then the egg would be shaped like this and it'd be shadowed like that, right? As the light's coming down. So it'd be like that. Boom, boom. You can set up a light source in a 3D program to confirm that. You can also set up an actual light source with eggs or other objects with a flashlight or something and, and see that that is true. So that's how you know the light is coming toward us quite a bit um, because you can also see the angle of the shadow here. The light has to come toward us. That is, if the light were directly to his to his side over here, if it were right here to the side, if we had a side view of the light, the shadow would be casted this way, right? But we know because the, sh the shadow is casted this way, we know the light has to be coming toward us, the viewer. And if the light were going directly behind him, we know the light is almost facing directly toward us. It's like, right, so hopefully that's making sense. All right, let's go ahead and do some basic shapes that you asked me to do here. So when you light up these objects, um, first I'm going to go ahead and put a tone down here really quick. All right, just some basic tone. And so if you have a, a light source and it's hitting this part of the cylinder, and let's say the light is kind of um, toward us a little bit, but not too much. It's above the object, obviously, because it's hitting this part. So it's not directly above it, otherwise it would be hitting more like here. And it's to the left of the object. So we know it's above the object, to the left of the object a little bit. So how you want to imagine this, then, is draw a little diagram, let's say. I'm going to just remove that, I'm going to remove that sphere right there. Okay. Oops. I'm going to just keep that and multiply. I'm going to make a layer above this layer. All right. So we make a little diagram. We think about, okay, what's the up view, the top view of this look like? And so let's say we have um, top view here and we have our square. All we can see is the top of it. Like this, that's this top plane. That's all we can see. And we can see this top plane and that's all we can see. So we know that um, you know it comes off this corner here, and it comes like well, it's kind of at an angle, isn't it? Uh, the perspective's not quite correct on this drawing. I didn't draw this, but uh, anyway, like that. So now we can see the top, and we can see another top over here of that box, and then we see the cylinder here is running. It looks like it's touching the edge, so we'll have it touching the edge. And that's how you know the perspective's off here, but. Uh, comes like that and we kind of see the top of the cylinder right and then knowing that you can kind of figure out more of the lighting so we know the light from the top view then it's to the left of the object but it's also in front of the object a little bit like over here a little bit like this so that, let's say the light is right about here this is from the top view so from the top view light hits like that it doesn't hit this side plane very well at all in fact it's you can tell because the angle it's kind of being cut off so there's not gonna be really any light hitting that side view if any at all, and so it's going to be dark, like that. In fact, let's make it really dark, because let's say it's only one light source in this whole thing. And then there's some bounce light from over here, and so we'll light up that side a little bit. And then there might be a little bit of light that hits this very edge here, just because and it's going to be a gradient, because it's a flat surface, so you make a, a kind of gradient. We know that there's going to be some dark underneath here, and that's because that's like a little bit, well, it's not going to be that big. It's going to be pretty thin, actually. This is like the cast shadow, but uh, we're only seeing part of it because the light's kind of coming down. Now, the next thing I want to do is a, a side view, so. All right, so let's say this is a side view now. And now with the side view, you want to think, okay, what, what side do we want to view this at? And we'll go ahead and draw it like this. So we'll draw these planes here. So you have this plane and this plane and this side, right? That's what we're going to be drawing. And so we have a side view, bam, like this. Um, this is going to be a little bit difficult to draw because it's not completely straight. So it's going to kind of come 
you know, kind of comes off like that at an angle. And it's going to come toward us a little bit. And I guess it's a, if it's a completely straight side view, we'd still be able to see a little bit of that top part. And a little bit of this here because it's kind of coming at us. Uh, and then we have the cylinder, which is kind of like this. We'll be able to see a little bit of that plane there because this is coming at an angle toward us even from a side view. In fact, this is almost a side view already, but not quite. But anyway, the perspective is all wrong on this drawing. But uh, anyway, so what we have here is something like that. Now we've got to think about where is the light source from the side view. We know it's to the left, or from the top view, we know it's a little bit toward the object. So we know it's uh, this plane here is this plane here, right? So we know that it's, uh, that's this plane here, right? So we know that the light source is a little bit over here. We know it's going to be above the object a little bit. How high do we want it? Let's say we want it about this high right here, right? So it's not above this top plane, this top plane here, but it is above this top plane. So we know the light is, you know, somewhere in this area like this. We also know it's over here somewhere, right? Um, it's off the page, but we know it's like like that. And then we want to think, well, how? Um, well, that's pretty much it. That that gives you the the idea of how high the of the of the light is. So this gives you the position of light. This gives you the height of the light. And that's really all the all the information you need to know. So now we know that this top plane here is going to receive light. This top plane here receives light. This top plane here doesn't because the light isn't tall enough to hit it. See, as, a, as the light comes up there, it doesn't hit that top plane. So that top plane is going to be dark. Um, the light is coming like this. You can see it's hitting this side plane a little bit. That is this side plane here. It hits it a little bit, but not too much. So it's not going to be as bright as other objects, but it's going to be somewhat bright. And it's going to have a gradient because it, it, the, the, the light is coming away from it's like heading at an angle, and so it, since it's flat plane, it gets a gradient as it goes out. That is, the light is hitting more here and less over there because the, the, the lines get longer and longer from this source to here. Let me use a smaller brush in like yellow. From there to there to there to there, the lights get longer, the lines get longer and longer, meaning that the light is taking longer to hit each part of that. So it gets darker and darker as it moves toward the side of the plane. This front plane, however, is pretty much directly being hit by light, so it's going to be bright. This front plane is going to be bright. But um, one thing is that the light source, I'm not getting into too much detail here, like you know, with edges and all that kind of stuff, the edge would be really bright because it's, it's an edge brighter than everything else. And you'll be able to see the edge pop out and stick out. You're going to have a little bit of shadow right there. And then the main shadow, though, as you can see, it's coming like this. So the shadow, and we know it's above, so the shadows are going to be casted um, like on the ground over there, so we'll see this part of the shadow. And then part of it's going to be is being uh, distorted. I'm just going to make this all dark for right now. It's going to be distorted as it comes up onto this form here. Right, and it kind of comes up a little bit higher. Or a little bit smaller, it's one of the two. I have to think about it for a second. I think it's a little bit higher though. Like that, so it's going to kind of have a little bit of a step to it. No, actually, it's not going to be that high because it's the light's coming from above, not from below, and so it's actually going to be, it's actually going to be very tiny. And then as it goes down to the ground, it's even tinier because the form itself is this form, the form of the cylinder itself is blocking a lot of that light. Not the light, sorry, blocking a lot of the shadow. So the form of the cylinder itself is blocking a lot of the shadow, so we can't see much of it. We just see the very, maybe the very edge of it. And then all this is going to be casting shadow, and we know the direction of the light comes like this, and it hits the edge of this here, and so the edge of this, this edge right here. This edge over here is all going to be in shadow. That's uh, the form shadow, though. It's turning away from the light. Now the cast shadow is going to be kind of like cast in this direction, and then when it hits here, it comes up. And this is a pretty tall object, so it's going to continue going back on top of that plane again, like so. So all that is going to be shadow. And hits over here, and it kind of goes like that. So the shadow kind of is going to kind of go like that, right? Because you see how the light is hitting that edge and that edge over there. So that, that top view really helps you understand how 
the shape of the shadow should be. And then um, we're going to be seeing the, the edge of that and edge of this over here as it turns back. And it's going to be like something over here. And I'm just going to kind of quickly guess at it, not too too much thinking, because I don't want to spend too much time on this. This is going to have some light. This is going to have some light. Right, that's actually pretty lit up because that part's being hit by the by the light directly. And then that side plane is going to have form shadow because it's turning away from the light. And then it's going to have its own drop shadow. And notice that the light is coming out further. So this shadow doesn't follow this same line. It actually has a shadow coming out more like this. And then it's going to come up because the light is coming down. It's hitting that plane there. It's hitting that corner over there. So it's like boom, and then it's like boom. And so it's going to kind of have a, um, i got to think about this for a second. Sometimes this takes a little bit of thinking about, and I don't want to do the drawing of the diagram where you draw out the perspective lines, you know, coming out of, of each bottom, and then draw through the tops, connecting to them, and to the top, connecting to them and all that anyway. But um, shadow should kind of look like this, though. And because it's one light source, it connects with the other with the other shadow, and all looks like one color. It all just looks like one shadow, pretty much. I don't know if that I'm thinking about this. That that's right for a second. Um, shadows can get confusing. Anyway, it's gonna hit this, the lights, and it hit now. This shadow's gonna be extremely long, and the reason why it's gonna be because look how the light hits it here and there, and the light is uh, remember how high it is. It's almost directly next to it. And when the light's directly next to them, it makes shadows long. So this shadow's gonna be long, and it's gonna be, you know, have the shape of the box out there. That is, this corner here is being, being represented way out there. It's gonna look something like that. Now, to, it'd be better to just kind of reaffirm this, like in Daz Studio or Google SketchUp would be a faster way to do it, I think, if you're familiar with how to use Google SketchUp. And of course, actually, it has to fall on the ground first, so that's all wrong. Um, first, uh, sorry about that. I this. You have to drop this shadow way down here to the ground. So you have to drop this shape of the object down here, redraw it, redraw the perspective points coming out like that, and then draw the shadow. So it's going to look more like that. Okay, that's more where the shadow would be. Sorry about that. I forgot to, I forgot it was way up high. Okay. So I know it's really quick, but it gives you an idea kind of how to think about the lighting source. And so you want to think about the top view and the side views. In fact, when you go to draw draw something, it's good to draw a top view and a side view so you can kind of figure out the the position of the light and figure out where shadows might be cast and stuff like that. And you look at the top view and go, okay, the light's coming like this, okay. And just think about all the stuff I taught throughout the course and using the top view and side view will help you figure out how to map out your shadows and, and stuff like that. Right, so that's how you do it. That's how you'd light up that little scene. I know it looks really like crappy, but I can easily turn this into something that looks good in just maybe 10, 20 minutes if I just quickly went ahead and used smaller brushes and start uh, refining edges and things like that. So what I would do is I would take that same brush I've been using, make it a little bit smaller, and I would come in here and I would start refining edges. And this is without using any sort of... Uh, Any sort of um, mask or anything, just using the brush and colors. You know, just quickly go in there and just start fixing up the edges a little bit. Maybe take this here and take a super white color and go. Okay, that's the edge. That's the edge. That's that would definitely be defined. A little bit of this edge would be defined. And as I come through here, you can see I can quickly fix this and make it. I can start to make it look like. Yeah, you know, I can start. See as that box there is starting to look a lot better um, then I would have this shape and then there'd be a little bit of a shadow just coming right along the edge here just a little bit of like that just kind of define that it's on top of the other object and I, if I went through and I you know started fixing this whole thing I'd first redraw the whole thing uh, f from scratch though to fix the perspective but yeah there you go so ho hopefully this uh, little lesson tutorial question answering thing is helpful to you guys and it'll help you how to look at shadow and light a little bit differently and um, really um, if you haven't watched my form lighting and perspective course then I recommend watching that course and what I everything I just said here is gonna be like extra bonus for you without that course everything I said here is still beneficial but it's not gonna be as beneficial as if you had all the information in that course first because that's all like required information to better understand this all right thanks
Oh yeah, and uh, please subscribe if you find my channel helpful, and spread the word. Let other people know about it. You know, you can like go, you can like just link to my YouTube channel on forums and stuff like that. Cool.